Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in this uh, short lecture, we are going to see one type of function of random variables which also shows up quite, uh, quite often. So we saw general functions of random variables, we saw how to deal with them and then we saw sums of random variables, particularly sums of independent random variables and we saw that that is very nice and it results in so many interesting relationships and sums occur all the time. We will see later on how uh, sums are always occurring in, in when you deal with uh, random variables and probability spaces. Okay? Another function which is very common is minimum and maximum. Okay? Uh, so here is an example I have given you. Supposing you have two random variables x and y uh, which have a joint distribution, uh, uh, joint PMF fxy. I can define z as the minimum of x comma y. Okay? So it is a very valid uh, sort of uh, operation to do, do not think of it as some strange thing. x is some value, y is some value, I can of course take min of x comma y, there is nothing wrong with that, right? It is a function of x and y, clearly, right? So here is a simple example, you throw the die twice, z is the minimum of the two numbers seen. I might be interested in it, right? So when a random variable keeps up occurring, I may be interested in the minimum of those or the maximum of those, okay? So that is very useful to see, right? And uh, you can imagine so many situations where you want to track how low some value can go, how high some value can go and this operation will show up quite often in practice. Okay? So it turns out finding the minimum is not too hard given the joint PMF. You can write down a very easy uh, little expression, maybe not easy, very easy but still you can write it down. Later on we will see some simplifications particularly for minimum and maximum. Okay? So the PMF of z evaluated at small z is basically the probability that minimum equals z. So if the minimum of two random variables has to be equal to z, one of them has to be equal to z, the other should be greater than or equal to z, right? And this if you break up into disjoint cases, you will get three different disjoint cases. One is both of them are equal to z, the other is x is z, y is strictly greater than z, the third possibility is x is strictly greater than z and y is equal to z. Okay, so these are the three possibilities. You can sum up and find the probabilities of them. Right? The first event is probability is f x y of z comma z. Uh, the second one is summation over all t two greater than z f x y of z comma t two. Right? And the third event is summation over all t one greater than z f x y of t one comma z. <coughs> right? So finding the PMF from the joint PMFs is sort of a straightforward exercise for the minimum, except that you have all these ugly summations. We'll see how to deal with them soon enough. What about maximum? I have not written down maximum explicitly, but you can see clearly how you can do maximum, right? You can repeat the same thing for maximum. For max of z, right, x can be z, y can be z. That is one possibility. The other possibility is x is equal to z and y is strictly lesser than z. The third disjoint possibility is x is strictly less than z and y is equal to z. So that is maximum equal to z and you can write down the same thing. I am not writing it again. Uh, you please go through the exercise and write it for max. It is a very easy, uh, sim simple thing to do. Once you know the min, extending for the max is not too hard. Okay? All right, so let us try and execute it for a uh, simple uh, experiment here. I have thrown a die twice and z is the minimum of the two numbers seen. What is the probability that z equals 1? Right? So if you want to find probability that z equals 1, okay? So notice uh, I can be, uh, right, minimum of the two numbers should be 1. So it is this and this, isn't it? Those are all the cases. So that is 5 plus 6, that is 11 by 36, okay? So let us do a multicolor presentation, go to my blue here. So supposing I want to ask probability that z equals 2, now 2 can happen if, uh, you know, uh, the, this, uh, com this, all these cases, the minimum of the 2 will be 2 and these cases also. Do you see how this is working out? Okay. So this will be 4 plus 5, that is 9 by 36. Let us go to the third color, which is green and ask what is the probability that z equals 3. Notice here the minimum of the 2 has to be equal to 3, okay? So there is no, no other possibility. So these are the possibilities for that. That is 7 by 36. Hopefully I do not have to illustrate any more with my colors. So you can see probability of z equals 4 will be 5 by 36. Probability that z equals 5 will be 3 by 36. 
and probability that z equals 6 will be 1 by 36. You can check 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 is 36. You can check that, okay. I just did that, it's true, okay. So you say it's a valid distribution and you can see how it works. Even for the max, something very similar is true, right. So you just think about how uh, max works out. You have to just do the sort of a different summation, you will get it, okay. So this is a simple illustration of how with PMFs you can work, but it turns out for minimum, particularly if the two random variables are independent, the cumulative distribution function of the maximum is very, very easy to write down, okay. I didn't, I didn't talk about the minimum here, the maximum is easy to write down. So far, we have not mentioned the CDF too much, right. In your statistics 1 course, you might have studied CDF. CDF is a very useful tool as well. But so far in the discrete case, PMF is quite good, CDF you do not need too much. Uh, but in the maximum, when you want to distribute, find the distribution of the maximum, particularly in the independent case, you will see the CDF will wonderfully simplify things for you. So what is CDF again? We have seen this before, cumulative distribution function of a random variable is a function from the real line to 0, 1, okay. And it is defined as simply the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to x, right. So for PMF, it is probability that x equal to small x. For CDF, it is probability that x is less than or equal to small x. So it turns out CDF is very, very important. It is much more general than the PMF. Uh, but so far, we have been looking at discrete random variables, so PMF we have been happy with, but CDF is important, it will make an appearance soon enough in our study, okay. Now CDF, or finding maximum of two independent random variables is very, very useful. Why is that? Let us say X and Y are independent and Z is max of X comma Y, okay. Now when I want to find the CDF of Z evaluated at small z, what is it by definition? it is the probability that max of x comma y is less than or equal to z, okay. Now it turns out this max of x comma y less than or equal to small z is exactly the event that x is less than or equal to z and y is less than or equal to z, okay. Think about this very carefully. Uh, if x is less than or equal to z and y is less than or equal to z, clearly max of x comma y is less than or equal to z, okay. So one way it is true. The other way it's also true, if max of x comma y is less than or equal to z, of course x is less than or equal to z and y is less than or equal to z, isn't it? So you see that these two events are exactly the same, okay. So maybe it's a little bit troubling, think about it for a while, you'll, you'll see why. Now once I write it like this, my independence kicks in, x is less than or equal to z, y is less than or equal to z are independent events, so I can simply write it as probability that x is less than or equal to z times probability that y is less than or equal to z. That works because of independence. Remember this to this is by independence. It will not happen always. If they are not independent, you cannot write it like this. You have to go to the CDF or something, I mean the joint CDF or something and do like, it is a bit more complicated. But once you do this, you identify that probability of x is less than or equal to z is simply the CDF of x evaluated at z probability of y is less than or equal to y is CDF of y evaluated at z. So we get this very nice relationship in the independent case, CDF of maximum is product of individual CDFs. What about minimum? Minimum is not quite so easy, you have to do a little bit more, but you will see you can do a minimum with uh, x greater than or equal to uh, z. So, uh, so, so for CDF we did less than or equal to, for minimum you can do with greater than or equal to, okay. So it is not the same but greater than or equal to will factor very nicely. It is it's like, it is called the complementary CDF or something, something like that, okay. So, so, so I will let you think about the minimum on your own but for max at least it is very easy to write down, right. right? Mi minimum of x comma y if it is greater than or equal to small z then x will be greater than or equal to small z and y will also be greater than or equal to small z, right. So that, that works out. So the greater than or equal to direction will work for minimum, okay. All right. So let us uh, apply this idea for IID sequences, right. Independent and identical is the really the thing to say. So for probability of max, I will do the second part first. Max of x1, xn is less than or equal to z. We saw this just now, it is probability that x1 is less than or equal to z, comma x2, remember comma is and, okay, x2 is less than or equal to z, so on till xn is less than or equal to z. That is nothing but probability of x is less than or equal to z 
raised to the power n. Okay, so this is the general formula, and this is just the CDF of x raised to the power n. Okay, very easy formula to write down. For the first one, for the min, it's easiest to write it as greater than or equal to. Okay, so this will work out as x1 is greater than or equal to c, x2 is greater than or equal to c, so on till xn is greater than or equal to z. Think about it. If, if all of these guys are greater than or equal to, then the minimum is greater than or equal to. If the minimum is greater than or equal to, then all of them are greater than or equal to. So both ways it works. These two sets are the same. So this is nothing but probability of x is greater than or equal to z, the whole thing raised to the power n. Uh, this is, uh, you, you, I mean, you can't quite write it in terms of the CDF and all that. This is less than, greater than or equal to, etc. So anyway, I, I'll leave it at this point. In this, uh, in this formulation, okay? So this is min and max of IID sequences. You see how uh, the CDF raised to the power n uh, shows up in these pictures, okay? Uh, I believe this is the last uh, problem that we are doing in this, uh, in this uh, session. Uh, let's uh, work on it, okay? So here's, here's another very interesting property of geometric distribution, okay? We're going to look at minimum of two independent geometric uh, distributions, okay? So we know how to deal with this. So, so I'm thinking of uh, minimum of x, y. I know the best way to answer this minimum of x, y is to look at this when is min of x, comma y greater than or equal to. This is geometric. Let me just use k, okay? So this is probability that x is greater than or equal to k times probability that y is greater than or equal to k, right? Both of them have the same... Uh, PP, so that's very nice. So for geometric, probability that x is greater than or equal to k will end up being 1 minus p raised to the power uh, k minus 1, isn't it? Okay. Now y is also another independent uh, geometric, so it's again 1 minus p raised to the power uh, k minus 1. Okay. So together this just becomes 1 minus p whole squared raised to the power k minus 1, okay? So this minimum of x comma y greater than or equal to k is 1 minus p whole squared raised to the power k minus 1, okay? So keep this in mind. So what is probability that minimum of x comma y is greater than or equal to k plus 1? Instead of k, you put k plus 1. So that will be 1 minus p whole squared times k, okay? Is that okay? So now what's probability that minimum of x comma y, I'm just uh, sort of beating around the bush here, so maybe you can see this, is equal to k. So I'll, I'll tell you this is probability that minimum of x comma y is greater than or equal to k minus probability that minimum of x comma y is greater than or equal to k plus 1, isn't it? So if I do subtraction of these two, I'm going to get equal to k, right? So this is greater than or equal to k. So it's k, k plus 1, k plus 2, etc. This is greater than or equal to k plus 1, k plus 1, k plus 2, etc. So you subtract these two, you'll get k. And that guy, if you see very carefully, you will get uh, 1 minus p squared, I'm sorry, 1 minus p whole squared, so let's call q as 1 minus p whole squared, okay? We'll simplify our expression here. So it's q power k minus 1 minus q power k. So that's q power k minus 1 times 1 minus q. What is this distribution q power k minus k times 1 minus q for min of x comma y equal to k? That is nothing but min of x comma y being geometric with, okay? So we see from this expression that this is geometric 1 minus q, okay? So notice the way the geometric works. See, remember, if, if, if x is geometric uh, with p, uh, the probability that x equals k is 1 minus p power k minus 1 times p, okay? So notice that 1 minus p, so q becomes 1 minus p, so for my parameter for the geometric will be 1 minus q, okay? So this is not peculiar to both of them being p actually, right? So I could have as well taken x being geometric with uh, p1, x1 being geometric with uh, p1, and x2, x2 being geometric with p2, 
okay, and both being independent. I could have actually done this and then you can show using the same sequence, use the same sequence, just keep track of P1, P2, you will see that this will be geometric with uh, instead of this 1 minus 1 minus p whole square, it will be 1 minus 1 minus p1 times 1 minus p2, okay. So if you want, you can write this as p1 plus p2 minus p1 p2, okay. It is the same thing, both of them are the same, okay. So this is a very nice result, isn't it? Once again, minimum of two independent geometrics is a geometric distribution, okay. So uh, you, you can do this, try and repeat the same calculation for maximum of two geometric PMFs, that is not uh, geometric, okay. The maximum of two geometric uh, distributions, even if they are independent, is not geometric. The minimum is uh, geometric, okay. Uh, that concludes the lecture and that also concludes the lectures for this week. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will see you next week.